I'm Jim Armour, President and CEO of AM General Corporation. We're here today at the home of the world famous Hummer. This factory located in Mishawaki, Indiana, has produced over 140,000 Hummers for distribution around the world. Opened in the early 1980s, it contains over half a million square feet of production space. Our workforce is represented by Local 5 of the UAW and represents a world-class workforce. Today I'm driving my new Hummer. Over the past several years, I have driven many Hummers throughout the world over hundreds of miles of trail. Using the techniques that you're about to see in this video, I have had many hours and many miles of trouble-free, safe, and very exciting experiences. You can too, if you follow the tips in this tape. Using a four-wheel vehicle in an off-road environment is more commonplace than you might think. Recreational four-wheeling has evolved into a multi-million dollar business. And four-wheel drive vehicles have been used in industry for many years to move equipment, parts, and personnel. You see, off-roading is used for both big business and pleasure. And in some cases, lives can depend on it. Hi, I'm Tim Bonadies. And for the next few minutes, I want to show you how to get the most out of your AM General Hummer safely. We've assembled a group of off-road automotive experts to help you understand the concepts and practical applications of safe off-road operation. By reading your owner's manual, watching this video, and some behind-the-wheel practice, you can achieve the three main objectives to safe off-road operation. Know the capabilities of your Hummer to get the most out of it how to drive safely and properly in different off-road environments, and operate your Hummer with respect for the environment. We're here today at the AM General Technical Training Center. To better understand your vehicle's capabilities, let's take a look at how the Hummer was designed and why. Your Hummer has an average height of 75 inches, and body width is 86 and a half inches, similar to other trucks in its class track width of a little over 71 and a half inches with a wheelbase of 130 inches provides a stable platform on or off-road. Without a winch, the Hummer has a 72 degree approach angle or 47 degrees with a winch and departure angle is 37 and a half degrees. Side slope capability is up to 40 percent on good concrete while grade capability can be as great as 60% on good concrete. Ground clearance is a full 16 inches, and water fording is up to 30 inches deep. And amazingly, a skilled driver can accomplish this with a payload of nearly 4,000 pounds. To further understand your vehicle, let's take a look at some major components and systems of the Hummer and see what they'll do for you off-road. You've seen how the Hummer was designed, now, our technical service specialist will show us how these systems work together. Hi, John. We're ready to see what's under the hood and everything else between the frame rails. Good idea, Tim. Under the hood's a great place to start. The power plant is a General Motors turbocharged 6.5 liter V8 diesel engine. Its high torque rating at low RPM is what makes this engine such a workhorse. And the turbo gives it quicker acceleration. The automatic transmission is a General Motors 4L80E Hydromatic with four forward speeds and one reverse. This transmission is cooled by an oil cooler mounted in front of the radiator. During off-road use, it's important to remember to use the drivetrain whenever possible to control vehicle speed. Downshift whenever possible to slow the vehicle on all terrain. Then upshift to increase speed. You should apply your brake as little as possible. So there's an off-road operation tip to start our list. Use the drivetrain to control vehicle speed and the brake as little as possible. That's right, which leads us to the function of our next major component, the transfer case. The Hummer transfer case allows for true full-time four-wheel drive and it's also cooled by transmission fluid flowing through an internal cooler. On all surfaces, the transfer case gear range is very important. H, or high position, is used for normal condition hard surfaces at all speeds such as highway and city driving. HL and L are the two lock positions. 
When using these positions, the engine torque is divided equally, so the front and rear wheels drive simultaneously. This provides additional mobility in rough terrain. HL is used for mud, snow, sand, and ice. Any adverse condition at normal vehicle speeds. L position is used for the most severe conditions where you need the most torque, pulling, or holding power, such as steep grades and severe obstacles. A caution about the L range, the vehicle must be stopped with the transmission placed in neutral before selecting or deselecting the low range. Be sure to pull the lever completely into the low range and wait for the lock light to come on before proceeding. In the N position? The N or neutral position disengages all gearing and is used for towing the vehicle. Once again, the vehicle must be stopped with the transmission placed in neutral before selecting or deselecting the end range. And don't forget to set your parking brake. I think we can add this to our off-road tips. Choose the proper transmission and transfer case range according to terrain conditions. The next component in the powertrain is the differential. Housed in the axle assembly, the differential unit is tasked with distributing the input power or torque out to the wheels. The Hummer has a unique torque sensing, load sensing style of differential which automatically provides proper torque to the wheel with the best traction in most conditions. In the most severe terrain or on slippery surfaces, when a tire loses traction, the Hummer's automatic traction control system, TT4 or Torque Track 4, will activate. The Torque Track 4 system senses wheel spin and will automatically apply braking to the appropriate wheel, allowing the differential to redistribute torque to the wheel with traction. TT4 provides torque to any of the four wheels that have traction. As your brake is applied, Torque Track 4 is deactivated. Here's an off-road tip. Accelerate slowly in a smooth and constant manner to allow Torque Track 4 to do its job. The Torque Track 4 system is complemented with the addition of a four-wheel anti-lock brake system. ABS allows for controlled steering during a panic stop situation. Well, we're almost to the drivetrain. I see you've got a geared hub cutaway over here. That's right. The geared hub mechanism provides 1.92 to 1 reduction ratio. In effect, doubling torque at the wheels. It also helps add to ground clearance because of the input location. There's a few vehicle systems the driver should be aware of. The power steering system is air-cooled and provides fluid pressure to the brake hydro boost and to the steering gear. It's important to keep all fluids at the proper level. The operator should use every means available to keep proper maintenance records. The central tire inflation system, or CTIS, is a popular option which will enhance mobility and ride quality. CTIS consists of an air compressor, in-cab controls for inflation and deflation of front and rear tires, and a special hub and wheel assembly. When the operator selects inflate, air is pumped from the compressor through the air passage in the geared hub and into the tire. When deflate is selected, air is removed from the chosen tire sets. This gives the tire a longer and wider footprint for better traction. So there's our two final technical tips for off-road operation check all fluid levels, and adjust tire pressure for optimum performance. Thanks a lot, John. He's really taught us a lot about the Hummer. And I think we're ready to hit the trail. On the road, you'll find that the Hummer will easily fit into your everyday traffic routine. The only adjustment you'll need to make is getting used to turning heads. Remember, proper and timely servicing will keep your Hummer ready for all terrain, highway, city, rural, and of course, off-road. Knowing your vehicle's capabilities 
and design characteristics, you can more confidently operate in the off-road environment. We're here today to demonstrate some off-road driving techniques. And Catherine and Tom, our off-road driving specialists, are here to help us. But before we start, let's look at some basic off-road equipment and general safety rules. Review your owner's manual for off- and on-road operation. On long trips, plan your route. Know the terrain and weather conditions and use updated maps. Be prepared for emergencies and repairs. Carry a first aid kit, fire extinguisher, vehicle recovery kit, and some form of communication. And always wear your seatbelt. For group safety, use the buddy system. Travel in groups of vehicles. Keep track of the vehicle behind you. Wait at intersections to make sure the vehicle behind you sees which way you're turning. Use a guide if you're not sure of the proper approach for an obstacle. Allow the vehicle in front of you to complete an obstacle before you attempt it. During recoveries, keep all viewers clear of the recovery area and know and respect your personal limitations. First, visually assess the obstacle to determine your ability to cross it. If in doubt, get out and look at the obstacle. It's always time well spent. Remember, crossing obstacles incorrectly or too fast can damage your vehicle. Always approach slowly. Be sure you have enough ground clearance, approach and departure angles to cross safely and completely. Use the 15 degree rule. Approach logs, walls and ditches at a minimum 15 degrees from perpendicular. Place the transfer case in low range, transmission in one. Then turn your front tires perpendicular to contact the obstacle and slowly accelerate. If the obstacle is a log, allow one tire to crest the log before the second starts to climb. When climbing a wall or step, allow one tire to climb at a time. And when crossing ditches or mounds, use a smooth and constant throttle as torque track 4 activates. Then continue through the obstacle at the same angle. Be sure the slope is drivable within your vehicles and your own capability. If you're unsure, get out and walk the terrain to verify the degree of slope and that you'll have adequate traction to complete the climb or descent. And if you're still unsure, then find a different route. The severity of a slope and its surface condition will determine the best choice of gear range selection. Remember what we learned earlier. Select the proper tire pressure and transmission and gear ranges before starting. As a general rule, use a perpendicular approach when climbing a hill. Keep acceleration constant and smooth. Don't accelerate too quickly. An engine speed of 16 to 1900 RPM is optimum in low range. When reaching a hilltop, be prepared to stop. If you can't see the downward slope, get out and check. If you find you must go down the way you came up, always avoid backing down the slope. On downhill slopes, use low range, first gear, and your brake to ease the vehicle downhill until all four tires are on the slope. Again, whenever possible, use a perpendicular approach. Gently release the brake to allow the drivetrain to control the speed. As you proceed down the slope, avoid heavy braking. Locked up wheels can easily lead to an uncontrollable slide and possible damage. All terrain is dynamic, always changing, but no terrain changes as fast as sand. When operating on sand, key things to remember are proper tire pressure and a controlled vehicle speed. 
Use a low tire pressure for sand operation, between 12 and 20 PSI. The optional central tire inflation system will greatly improve mobility on sand. Again, use a perpendicular approach to upward and downward slopes and avoid side slopes on sand. Momentum is crucial on sand. Keep the vehicle moving at the lowest RPM possible, avoiding tire spin. And once again, use the drivetrain to slow the vehicle on the downward slopes. If the slope contains severe terrain, use a guide at a safe distance outside the vehicle to direct you. Agree upon simple hand signals for communication, such as ease forward, stop, turn left, or right. Use a smooth and constant throttle to slowly ease the vehicle onto the obstacle, being prepared to use your brake to slow the downward fall of the vehicle. Whenever possible, avoid operating on a side slope. If you must traverse a side slope, be sure you judge the slope properly. Remain under 40%, about 22 degrees. In soft terrain side slopes, adjust your tire pressure to allow better traction. Use a slight serpentine weave across the side slope. And if your back end slides, always turn downhill to regain control. It should be very seldom that you have to cross water. But if you do, remember these three tips. You must know the full depth you're about to cross. Many times, this means you must wade the water first to check the depth and stability of the base. Remember, your Hummer can cross 30 inches if it's a diesel model, 24 inches if it's a gas model. Exceeding that depth can damage your vehicle and void your warranty. Enter the water slowly, less than 5 miles per hour. Proceed slowly and cautiously. And remember, if water gets splashed into your air intake, it could severely damage your engine and void your warranty. Never try to restart an engine stalled by water. Get service assistance immediately. Using any vehicle in an off-road environment, you run the risk of getting bogged down, mired in, or high-centered. Frankly put, you're stuck. But with the right equipment and some know-how, you can turn stuck into simply delayed. Safe vehicle recovery demands proper and correct procedure. It's critical for you to understand the procedures outlined in your owner's manual, as well as information provided with your winch and winch accessories before attempting any vehicle recovery. Let's take a look at some basic equipment used for vehicle recovery. The optional winch on your Hummer is rated at 12,000 pounds pulling load capacity. Other accessories include leather gloves, choker chain, tree trunk protector, clevis, snatch block, and a recovery strap. Let's go get stuck and do a safe vehicle Tim, recovery. Send for a copy. Send for a copy. I'm over here in the sand and I kind of, well, I'm stuck. I'm going to have to winch out. Looks like somebody beat us to it. 10-4, Tom. We'll be right there. First, find a solid anchor point. Your winch is more efficient when you use more wire rope. If you're unsure of what a suitable anchor is, refer to your owner's manual. For your protection, secure loose clothing and always wear gloves. Use the recommended equipment to attach to the anchor point. 
Remember, always use a tree strap and clevis to protect a tree. Turn the clutch lever to free spool. Pull the cable out to the desired length, leaving no less than one full layer on the drum. Place the hook into the clevis with the mouth of the hook upward. Turn the clutch lever back to engaged. Connect the remote to the control box on the front of the winch. Take in the slack of the wire rope until it is almost tight. At this time, you will want to lay a blanket, coat, or chain over the wire rope to keep it from backlashing in case it breaks free from the anchor. It is extremely important to keep everyone clear of the wire rope and winching area. Use the full length of the remote cable, staying clear of the front. Make sure the transmission is in neutral and the parking brake off, and start your vehicle. Pull in short amounts of cable at a time until the vehicle is free. This will keep the winch from overheating and allow you to steer toward the anchor, maintaining a straight pull. If you should happen to overload the winch, refer to your owner's manual for resetting procedures. This type of recovery we've just completed is commonly referred to as a single line rig and is the basis for most winching operations. Occasionally, the mud, snow, or sand you're in may require additional pulling power. By using a snatch block, you can effectively double your pulling power. Using the single line rig as a starting point, attach the snatch block to the anchor with the clevis and place the wire rope on the pulley. Close the block and make sure it is securely fastened. Pull the wire rope back to your vehicle and hook it to the recommended anchor point. This is called a double line rig. Never hook the steering drivetrain or suspension components. This could result in serious damage, making your vehicle unsafe to operate. Recovery is now the same as a single line rig, with half the line speed, but twice the pulling power. Sometimes the anchor point that is directly in front is too close, or you may need to use an angle pull rigging. By using the snatch block, you can use anchor points at different angles. After using your winch, be sure to rewind the wire rope carefully and neatly so it's ready to use the next time you need it. Use a strap to keep your hands clear when rewinding. With the time you've invested today, you've already become a better, safer off-road driver. Remember the three objectives we talked about earlier? Well, I think you've accomplished those goals. To know the capabilities of your Hummer, to get the most out of it. By understanding the reasoning behind the design of the body and vehicle system, you can more fully utilize your vehicle. You've seen how to drive safely and properly in different off-road environments. With careful attention to proper techniques, and some practice, you can successfully cross some of the most severe terrain. And you've seen that respect for the environment will preserve the commercial and recreational off-road areas. Remember, tread lightly on public and private land. Be sure to read and review your owner's manual. It's got a wealth of information about your vehicle. I'm Tim Bonadies for AM General. Drive safely. And enjoy your Hummer. <laughs>